Hey doing everyone, it's Chen from chenhophood.com.au and today I'm going to talk to you about something that the Nikon D810 has and that's its crazy ability to recover shadow details. So, we have this image here and it is, as you can see, it's underexposed. It's actually a part of a bracketed exposure. So it's my two stops under exposed. So we're looking at two stops. And that's two stops for the sky. So you're saying, yeah, okay, it's got this crazy ability. Well, this isn't exactly something I love, but it is something I enjoy having at my disposal but it's also something that I feel has caused some photographers to get really really lazy and not just lazy but almost stupid in what they do with their images so here we have this file now when I was shooting on my Canon 5D Mark II if I shot this that was it. There was no way I could even make this into an image that was anywhere decent. Okay, yeah, I could play around with it a lot, and but the time that it would take really wasn't worth it. The amount of noise you'd get, the and just sort of artifacts and stuff breaking down, it wasn't worth it. So I'm going to show you now the D810. It's stupid crazy stupid so first things first we're going to go down and we're going to enable the profile corrections and we're going to remove chromatic aberration next thing we are going to boost the exposure because hey it's underexposed so we're going to go straight up and we're going to go to two because i know it's about two stops under as you can see uh, you know yeah okay that's a lot better and that's just from making one change on one slide. So I'm going to pull highlights down. Now I know I've got detail in the highlights because this was underexposed. But so the highlights have got heaps of detail there. Shadows. This is where things start to get a little bit silly. I'm going to pull the slider plus 100. Now you can see there's detail there. Okay. I'm going to pull the highlights down to 100 and I'm going to go two and a half stops and still I know I've got that detail you can see the detail I have here so what I'm going to in the sky so what am I going to do well, I'm going to boost the whites right up and I'm going to just pull the blacks down a bit add a bit of contrast now this is getting a bit silly because suddenly you've taken an image that was nearly pitch black and you know it's got noise there but looking at it from this angle it's not too bad so I'm going to do some vibrancy just I'm going to obviously crank it a little, little bit sort of further than I should mainly just so I can make some adjustments here make some adjustments blew it up add a bit of that yeah it looks pretty good all right so now we've got an image that's not too bad you know we can see everything it looks it looks pretty good we're going to go down to the tonal curve. I'm going to pull these lights down and pull these highlights down because we've still got that detail there. You know what? I'm going to just open, just brighten those shadows even even more. You know, like more. I'm talking, you know, I've taken something that was pitch black and there's still detail there. You can see the noise in here. Well, at least I can see the noise. I don't know if you'll be able to. But it still is usable. Down here, it gets a little bit chaotic and a little bit muddy so what we're going to do now is i'm going to take this by clicking this little bit here and i'm just going to put it on a section where i've got a little bit of variety as you can see there i've got variety i've got a bit of just the the lighter section of the tree and the nothingness so i'm going to do some sharpening you can see okay let's go for something like that yeah it's not too bad Let's look at this noise reduction. 
you know what, let's just crank it up a bit. You can see it's it's getting rid of the noise that's there. And we're just going to pull it down a bit. We're going to color noise. Now this is where you can see if we go in here and you do the color noise, we just pull that all the way. I don't, hopefully you can see this on, on your screen. But there's heaps of little red artifacts and sort of just blotches. If you go to that, we're going to, they're nearly all gone. Crank it a bit more and it's pretty good. You know, that's only got 20, 20 noise reduction on it. <laughs> like, that's crazy. Is that a good thing? You know what? I don't know. I actually have no idea if this is a good or if this is a bad thing. But I'm leaning more towards it being an absolute bad thing for most people. Now, what else can we do? Well, we don't really have to do much else. Most people are going to look at that and go, oh, wow, you know, that's really pretty. That You've done a really good job. I look at that and it's like, if you put that on the internet, most people aren't going to sort of know what's going on. You know, I mean... You could even lower the exposure just a little bit just to darken that up or, you know, darken the shadows a bit. And suddenly you've got an image that sort of has a, a rather nice feel. But my point about this that I want to make in this video, it's not so much the that the camera can do it that I'm concerned with. It's more the fact that people do it when they really shouldn't be. And there are people that, that are shooting and rather than taking say three photos and then merging them into you know create one exposure or people you know people sort of planning they're just like getting there and they're just going bang and they're shooting and they're not even sort of concerned when they look at the back of their camera and they go oh you know my histogram's not very good uh but you know people aren't even really looking at their histogram it's like uh, I can make that work and they're pushing an image that really shouldn't be pushed like that yeah okay you've pushed it but I mean you still look at the histogram it's not that good it's still you know is underexposed but what's scary is that you can actually do that and you can push it to there you can get the histogram looking sort of decent okay you know there's noise but people are actually doing that because when you look at it on the internet out at this most, and on Facebook, for instance, especially Facebook, most people aren't going to pick that that is an image that you've, you know, gone crazy on. So that's where, for me, cameras getting more and more dynamic range. It is fantastic. Like, I love the fact that of how well you can just pull back shadows. I love that. I love that you can take an image. It reduces workflow, but it also means that people get lazy and there are, people getting lazy and just sort of shooting one exposure when I think they should be shooting more. Okay, this might be just my opinion, but, you know, honestly, let me know, you know, let me know in the, in the comments. Give me some feedback on this one. Do you think that people are getting lazy in photography and not actually can sort of caring about their settings or caring about what they're doing in photography do you feel that people just go out and shoot for the sake of shooting which is fine i've got no problem with people just shooting for the love of shooting but do you feel that there are prof people who are saying they're professionals just going out and shooting and not really actually taking into account what they're doing so you know please let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this video please like it subscribe to my channel there's going to be heaps more stuff coming